from the station working for you. This is ABC 27 News in high definition. Good evening, everyone. I'm Megan Healy. Thanks for joining us. A new season and a new era begins at Penn State University. The football team took to the field today for the first time under new head coach Bill O'Brien. Greg Mace is in State College now and begins our live team coverage. Greg. Well, Megan, the uh, parking lot is uh, cleared out, although there's still a lot of fans left here, and it was certainly an emotional day here. And I thought for a lot of people, there was just kind of a sense of relief finally to play some football. And even though the result against Ohio University wasn't what Nittany Lion fans wanted to see, it was a fresh start for Penn State football. The scene at Beaver Stadium looked and sounded typical. The moment was anything but typical. Hundreds of fans greeted Bill O'Brien and his team as they arrived at Beaver Stadium. The emotions flowed for players like Steel High's Jordan Hill and his family. Once inside, the look was different. Names on the back of the jerseys. No one, though, was forgetting the past. You know, bring some tears. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I miss Joe a lot. We, we all do, and it's, it's, uh, it's been a difficult experience, but we're so energized by the young breed and the new guy and the new coach, and uh, we're excited about supporting the team. It's, it, that's a great feeling. But it was the moments before the game that really brought the crowd together. And as the Nittany Lions ran onto the field and into a new era with a continuing sense of pride and passion for Penn State University. Now oh, Josh Reed joins me. When we first watched this offense this afternoon, we were like, whoa, what is this? This is fun to watch. And they looked good in the yep. first half. And I think they were feeding off a little bit of that adrenaline maybe from the fans. But you know what? It started well. It didn't end well. But it's nice to be able to talk about the Penn State defense instead of defense attorneys. Penn State is 5-0 all-time against Ohio University. Late in the first quarter, Matt McGloin under center. Looks out into the flat. Flips it to Bill Belton, his first career touchdown. The Nittany Lions lead 7-zip. Penn State would get on the board again in the second quarter. McGloin to Matt Lehman, the Newport grad, gets in for the score. Penn State had an 11-point lead at the half, but didn't score again in the game. Ohio University would take the lead on this touchdown pass. The Bobcats upset Penn State. 24-14 in the home opener. It's got to be a disappointing way to start the season. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we came out here with, with one goal, uh, and, and, and that was to win the ball game. And unfortunately, you know, we didn't play quite well enough to do, to do that today. We had to learn what we did wrong and, uh, you know, go back, watch film, learn what we did wrong, and execute for next week. And next week, the Nittany, Nittany Lions play at Virginia. Hopefully, hopefully they can get Bill O'Brien that first win. All right, we can check back with you a little bit later. We have yep. more highlights and more post-game reaction. Carissa Schatzer joins us in the, lot, in the parking lot now. You and I were here very early, and I just sense this really calming presence of the fans, of the mood here in the parking lot. Nobody was rowdy. It was just a really nice morning leading up to the game. It really was. Everybody really wanting to get back to kind of a normal Penn State football weekend. That includes the tailgating, obviously. And that's where I was today. There were a ton of people out here tailgating to give you an idea of how many people were out here. About 100,000 fit in Beaver Stadium, but not everybody who tailgates goes to the game. So there were more than 100,000 people out here, and they were one very excited crowd. In the shadow of the Penn State fallout, you might expect the game day mood to be a little down. But in the shadow of Beaver Stadium, morale is up. We all want to move on and I think we have as a community and like I said, morale today is fine and really upbeat and we're just having a great time today. Honestly, it's business as normal. I mean, from the tailgate side of things, everything's the same. Nothing's changed, so it's still Penn State. We're still here to play uh, play football and, and celebrate the team. So like normal, Penn State fans fired up the grills, played games, and cheered on the football team. We are Penn State! We are Penn State! There's no better place to be than Penn State and Beaver Stadium on a football weekend. That's It's great. The Penn State loyal even more determined to unite as one team and show their Penn State pride. Today's my 33rd anniversary. My wife and I decided to spend our anniversary here at Penn State. 
uh, supporting the team and Bill O'Brien and, and the school. Penn State as a whole is a family and we will always be a family through thick and thin we will always be together. They're also anxious to see how the new era of Penn State football plays out. It's so exciting and I can't wait to see how the team like is building on everything that's happened and I can't I can't wait to see how they do under Bill O'Brien. Definitely ready to see kind of a change, bringing a new new style offense and all that. I, I mean, I'm ready for a change. Obviously, not the start that everybody wanted to see, folks. A little disappointed here, but the sense that I get from everyone is that they're still going to come out and support their Nittany Lions no matter what. Well, and of course, you try to make it a lot of improvements from the first game to the second game. The next home game will be here in two weeks against Navy. Carissa, thanks. All right, uh, Megan, uh, certainly a lot of disappointed folks, but I think, again, a sense of relief that they are back playing football. We'll be back a little bit later on Sports Talk more about this game. And again, a reminder, the next game coming up is Saturday against Virginia. You're going to see that at noon here on ABC 27. We'll be back in about uh, 15 minutes with more from sports. All right, Greg, Josh, and Carissa, great job out there. We'll see you then. In other news tonight, Harrisburg police are investigating a morning shooting. It happened around 8.30 near the intersection of 18th and Regina Streets. Police say the victim was shot twice in the torso, once in the hand, and a fourth bullet grazed his head. Investigators believe this happened as part of a home invasion, but say the victim is not cooperating. In other news tonight, Lemoyne police are searching for the man they say held up two stores at knife point. Take a look at these surveillance pictures. Police say this man walked into the Turkey Hill on South 3rd Street just before 5 p.m. yesterday, grabbed the clerk from behind and held a pocket knife to her throat. They say he demanded cash. She gave it to him and he left. Police say then right before eight last night, that same man walked into the Palm Beach tan shop at the West Shore Plaza and again robbed a clerk at knife point. If you know who he is, call West Shore Regional Police. And an update now on hundreds of steel workers in Stilton. Their contracts expire at midnight and while there is no deal, there will also be no strike for now. The union representing the steel workers at Arsenal Mattel says striking is still an option for the future. The contract talks cover workers in three plants in Pennsylvania, including here in Stilton. There are 579 union workers there. The company says it needs to cut costs and wants to slash wages and benefits, as well as freeze contributions to pension plans. Tonight, there are nine new firefighters working in Harrisburg City. Mayor Linda Thompson officiated the swearing in ceremony yesterday at the Public Safety Center at Hack. She issued the oath of office to each firefighter and presented them with their badge. Now, these nine firefighters will spend the next week training before being rotated into regular duty. It has been a beautiful start to the holiday weekend, but can we make it to Monday without the rain? The big question on everyone's mind, Dan Tomaso in the Weather Center now with a first look at the forecast. Good evening, Dan. Well, good evening, Megan. We are watching a few showers pushing through Franklin and Adams County. That's been the case through the afternoon and evening hours, so it doesn't look like it'll be dry all the way through Monday. As you can see, those showers moving southeast through those two counties, and actually we do have a flood advisory now in effect for all of Adams County and southern Franklin County in effect until 8 45 tonight. You can see it's just this training of thunderstorms one after the other across places like Chambersburg, Gettysburg, also Fairfield. So something to be cognizant of this afternoon and evening as we're moving through the rest of the nighttime hours too. So 68 degrees, partly to mostly cloudy. Again, some isolated showers are possible, but we're not looking at widespread rain. I just showed you there's only a few showers around the viewing area now through tomorrow. We do have a better chance of rain. We'll be looking at that coming up in the extended forecast plus look at Monday's forecast as well. Megan, let's send it back to you. All right, thanks, Dan. It is perfect weather to get out there and enjoy the annual Capona Festival in Harrisburg. Harrisburg Magazine named Capona simply the best festival this year. And of course, Capona couldn't kick off without the annual chili cook-off today. Participants say the cook-off is a fun way to represent the community while engaging in competition. Last year, we were the second, cho um, second place People's Choice Award. And uh, we have a plaque here to prove it. It's right now serving uh, as a paperweight to hold our flyers down. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And the Capona Festival continues through tomorrow night with the fireworks finale. If it rains, the fireworks will go off Monday night. Well, Dan is back next with his full seven day forecast. And then later in sports, highlights from high school football and the longtime Harrisburg McDevitt rivalry. But first, the Republican convention is now over and it's the Democrats turn in Charlotte. We'll have a preview coming up.